In this video, we will talk about how to install Splunk Phantom as virtual machine image. Now Splunk Phantom provides a .ova file which we can download from the Phantom community site using which and with any any kind of virtual machine management application like VMware Fusion or VMware Pro or Oracle VirtualBox, we can install Splunk Phantom. Now that installation will be a unprivileged installation. That means there will be a user called Phantom, which owns all this full this, all this installation over there. We'll see that one uh, in in this video as well. Now the f as the Oracle VirtualBox is the free one, so that's why in this video we'll be using the Oracle VM VirtualBox. Now to first thing we need is the installation of the Oracle VM VirtualBox which we can download from this website Oracle VirtualBox website and I have already downloaded it and installed it in, in my system so I am currently using Windows so according to your uh, operating system you need to install the proper version over here so I have installed this VirtualBox 6.1 only so if I just click on over here download VirtualBox 6.1 so for different host we have different binaries which you can use it for your own, own installation and it is very simple installation over there it's a simple wizard and you can use that so I'll be providing this link as well in my video description so you can check it out from there so after we install Oracle VirtualBox the interface will look something like this one Oracle VirtualBox Manager now here we need to import that virtual machine image from the Splunk Phantom community side. So the second thing that's why we need is the Phantom OVA file. So that you can download from the uh, my.phantom.us website. So if you just go to product. So if you see from the product download page, so the current phantom version is 4.10 and there is a OVA file, it's I think size is almost 5 GB, so which you can download it from here. So I already downloaded it in my local, so I am not downloading it now. Now, but for this one, you need to have access to this website as well. So you need to create a free account over here, so which you can do it from here as well. So if you just search in Google uh, Splunk Phantom which will take you to this particular page so from here if you see the Splunk, Splunk Phantom free community edition so once you click that so it will basically ask you for the sign up so you can do the sign up from here that will create a username and password for you so then you can use that uh, credential for this website to download this particular image over here so I already did that one so I am not doing it now again so this link also I'll be providing in my video description as well so you can check that out so once we have that OVA file and once we have that Oracle VirtualBox installed in our system so now let's install the Splunk Phantom using this one so to import that OVA file what we will be doing it we will be going to file then import appliance now from here you need to go to that directory where you have saved that but save that particular file so uh, I saved it here phantom 4.1.0 4.10 and I'll click on open over here I'll be clicking on next okay so let's keep all these things as is now if you see it over here there is a base folder settings which is under currently showing under C users my my C drive now it takes lot of space over here so that's why it is recommended that you will not install this one this particular virtual image virtual disk image into C drive because it will take so many ample amount of space when your C drive will be full which is very vital for your windows operating system to work on so if it is c drive is in less on space it will be problematic for windows to run so that's why it is better to change this one over here okay so i'll be doing that one here let's say i'll be choosing my my d drive i already created a folder called virtual vm so you can create any folder over with any name over here so i'll be i'll be choosing this one over here so I'll be choosing this D virtual VMs folder. Now rest of the stuff I'll be keeping as is. So RAM you can assign based on the RAM available in your system. 
so i will be assign 4 gb almost okay 4 gb of ram to this one and it is a red hat 64 bit that is fine rest of the stuff looks fine so i'll be clicking on import now so over here also i'll be before importing over here also i'll be giving this base folder name over here okay so this is one then i'll be clicking on import over here so let's wait certain amount of time to th for this import to be completed then we will start this particular machine okay the phantom 4.1.4.10 virtual image has been imported now it took al around 2 minutes to import it over here so now what i'll do is we will be starting this particular one okay so i'll be selecting this particular image and i will be clicking on start over here now if it is getting started and if you see the current operating system you need to choose this one as well okay the first one the centos 7 so once the machine is started so if you see it is asking me for the phantom logging so as i said it is a unprivileged user installation over here so the user which owns this particular installation is the phantom so the username is phantom here okay now the default password is password so which it will be expiring so you can change this password after installation as well so if we just go to the phantom documentation page over here so after you install this one so you can change the password by using this this particular command pass wd phantom so let's change that one so i'll go over here i'll run this command pass wd phantom so it will ask me for so it is saying only root can specify a username okay let's let's do that one the root user comes with this particular installation uh, so splunk phantom actually uh, gives a random password over here so what we'll do first is first we'll change the root user password then we'll change this particular phantom user password so we will say now this phantom user has sudo access so we will say sudo P A double S W D W D root first. Okay, so now first we will change the root user password. So I'm just giving a simple password over here. So for your own purpose or production purpose, you need to give a strong password over here. Now after we change the password, so we will just say sudo so and then we will pass change the password for phantom pass wd p h a n t o m here so now let's give the password over here password over here okay so we change the splunk phantom account password and as well as the root account password now one thing you need to remember over here so if you are using Splunk Phantom for productions environment, it requires a static IP address. So for that, you need to go to this particular file, etc, sysconfig, network scripts and this particular file. Now if you, you will see this current content is this one. So if I, if I just go to this particular file over here, okay. So let's go to CD slash etc slash sysconfig sysconfig slash network network scripts so if i just ls minus lrt so the file is this one over here ifcfg so if i just do a vi ifcfg dash en 160 so the current content is this one over here if you see it okay so now for the production scenario you need to give the static ip address net mask and gateway as well so but the for test environment this is fine this particular settings is fine so as i am just doing it for the demo purpose so i am not changing it now but definitely for production scenario you need to 
change this one as well okay so after you made that change you need to basically restart that particular network over here so let's come out of this particular file now let's clear the screen so now the question is how we will be accessing this particular phantom ui from our browser from our local host okay now there are two ways you can do that so let me show you the first way so first thing is if you want to know the ip address of this particular virtual box so if i just run this particular command if config so it will give you the ip address of this one over here 192.168.0.85 so let's write it down somewhere so the url will be https colon slash slash the ip address will be 192.168.0.85 colon now the phantom is running on port https port is 9999 for this particular virtual image installation so this is the one way you can access it so if i just go to my browser and go to this particular url here it should take me the take me to the phantom install phantom ui page so if i just go to advance and proceed so i should be getting the phantom login screen over here so the user id is admin password so default password is p a w s w o r d password then if you are running it for the first time you need to accept the end user agreement so now it, it will ask you for the changing the password or 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 the tool similar way we have seen for our google cloud installation as well correct so it will it will basically uh, ask you for the ui tour and then it will it can generate some sample events which you can play around something like this one which we have already seen in our uh, google cloud installation so i am not going through that part even we in that particular video i show you how you can change the default password as well for this particular instance so that is also you can do it so this is one way so if you are using the ip address of this particular phantom installation now this will only work if i just go to virtual box for this particular image if i just go to settings now in the system tag you can see the ram you have assigned over here you need to go to the network tag over here the adapter is the bridged adapter over here it will only work in that way now if you want to use nat you can use the port forwarding as well so if i if i just choose attached to nat and if i just select advanced over here from the port forwarding you can add a port forwarding over here so it will be using the tcp now my host is my local host this is 127 dot zero dot zero dot one correct so this is my local host ip now for the port forwarding i can forward the request for all the request http request for uh, for port 9999 in my local to my guest now when you will be using the nat there is a static ip for this particular guest 10 dot zero dot 2.15 it will be always this one now as splunk phantom is running on port 9999 so all requests from my local host to the port 9999 it will be forwarded to the our phantom port 9999 and as we are using nat to connect to it so the guest ip will be always 10.0.2.15 over here so if i just click on ok click on ok over here as well so it will save the settings now i need to restart this one once so I will just power off this particular machine okay now I will be starting it again so once the machine is started I will be logging in with this uh, user phantom with the changed password here so now I will be accessing this particular system with my local host so if I just close this one now and try to run http colon slash slash 127 dot 
zero dot zero dot one colon nine 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 nine. So it will take me to the okay. It will be HTTPS HTTPS colon slash slash. So I'll just copy this one over here. So if I just go to this particular page, it will again take me to the phantom logging screen over here as well. Because all the requests for this particular port from my local host is going to this Plunk phantom instance. And I can use the same credential for for logging in over here to the Splunk Phantom as well. The same same Splunk Phantom over here. So this is the two ways you can access this particular Splunk Phantom from your local host as well. Okay, so so this is how we can use uh, or can basically install Splunk Phantom as a OVA file using a virtual machine image management software over here. Uh, so we used Oracle VirtualBox, so you can use any of these solutions over there like VMware Pro or VMware Workstation, something like this one. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful. See you in the next video.